The other thing is, is of course, we're segmenting or using WBS codes and location to break out those sections. Remember the one that I called Darren? There it is. And by the way, if we wanted to drag and drop that in there, so that item of project management's defined in there as well. Last but not least, I did change a WBS code, if you remember, uh, building floor and floor. And we'll say, okay, and on the fly, I'm going to create that WBS code for us so that we can see those items broken out. Building two, floor one, there's the one that I made the change to, building four, fourth floor. Last but not least, when you get into that, that mode of review, well, what if we have a, uh, a need to go out and see that takeoff, where it's represented on the plans? We can right-click and take us right back to that particular takeoff right there. Very powerful. So an audit trail on the way over and an audit trail on the way back. Now, to end out the presentation, I want to mention a few things. Multiple drawing windows gives you the opportunity to have as many windows open as you need. So if you need to drill in and see details on this particular page based upon uh, specifications for that object or whatever it may be, you can see it very easily. Have as many pages as you want open at the same time. As we move over into drawing here, we can have as many detailed scales on one page so if I wanted to call this uh, what went to the help for me there. Not one of my standard scales. Let's go with a half inch scale. Set the border for this. Now you're good to go. Everything within this border here will be that scale. Everything outside of it will be the default scale for the whole plan page. So, as you look at this, you can have as many scales on one page as you need. As I mentioned, we have an overlay compared to drawing. So, very easily, it will show you the differences between the two. And then last but not least, we have a, a count functionality that has very powerful capabilities to count on multiple pages rather than just one at a time. If you need more information, definitely let us know. As this presentation is about the bridge and looking at how it works in the 2D and the 3D world, let's move to the 3D world and take a look at how capable this system is. Now, what we're looking at here is Navisworks. And Navisworks is a solution that a lot of our uh, a lot of our customers out there utilize to do analytics like clash detection and some other things in here. But they also use it as a mechanism to draw those, those quantities that we need to cost out our estimates. When we look at the solution right here, of course, we can dive into this uh, uh, particular uh, uh, model that we have here, move them around. We've got what we receive from an architect. And it's built in their structure, how they want to see that information. So what we can do is we can drill down in and see that, that detail if we want to. Now, as an estimator, what we would look at in this case is we go into our basic walls, and let's say our interior wall right here. Well, we would have the properties up that would give us a lot of information, a lot of information that we can't take advantage of. It, it doesn't work for us because we really want the quantities, and there's over 250 attributes that you can put on each, each object. Not that architects take advantage of all of those, but we can do that if we need to or if they want to. 
So in this case right here, we have the quantification workbook that will allow us to strip away that information. So when we look at this basic wall right here, now what we can see is all of the details for the walls and then the summary of those walls as well. The other thing that was a time-consuming process is we would move all of these, these objects and br bring them down here into a format or a structure that worked for us. 16 division, 48 division, uniformat. Well, we don't have to do that anymore because what we'll do is we'll utilize the Sage Estimating database structure that we built to create that structure for us, just as a matter of process. Let's take a look at the bridge. And we'll create a bridge real quickly. And we'll align this with the same estimate that we had for the 2D. So think of this. Gather all of that information from the model and generate it to the estimate where we need to do 2D takeoff. We can't and move it all into the same estimate. So we'll say OK to this. And now think about this. You've got the structure of your database. Remember, your items and your assemblies available to you in the system. Well, let's go through the process of doing some takeoff. Now, if, you, if we look at the assemblies here, we can move this down to where we're looking at the walls that we want to take off right here. Well, I've loaded up a wall here. And what we want to do is give you the opportunity to make changes specifically to your business, your structure, how you want to break this off. And so I want to name this, uh, uh, I'll just call it Darren real quick. So now this is basic wall, Darren. Now we can take it off, drag and drop, and add it to that assembly. Now, once we've done this, and this is, this is looking back to what we already done in the 2D, same rules apply. We have the capability to map what comes from Sage Estimating and the attributes that come from the model, or should I say the object. When we look at that, we've got the object right there and all of those attributes. And look how we've mapped the description down here to location. Well, I put it to floor as well. When we f send that over into the estimating software, we'll be able to dissect that information. So simply click on that and send that over into the estimating. Now, we've already been through the process. Once we've done the mapping, then the system knows where those walls are. It will locate them automatically for you. So in this process here, it's automatically going to find those walls and give us the opportunity to generate those to the estimate. So quickly going through each one of those walls and sending that cost over into the estimating software. Can you imagine going through all 67 of those, those particular assemblies right there and generating those to the estimate? Even finding those would be a lot of fun. It's like a needle in a haystack there. Now when we look at this, now we've taken off those walls. What we can do is we can hide the assigned. And when you, when you when you look at this, now you can see over here, these are grayed out. That is an indicator that those have been sent over into the estimating system. As you can see, these interior walls have been sent over there as well. So when you have no model left, that means you've taken off all the disciplines, all the elements, and it's been sent to the estimating software. So we can hide those that we sent over there. The other thing is, is we can show the selected. So now we can see all of those walls or 
we can see a specific wall. Right there. And once again, grayed out so we can see all of the, the detail that we have right there. Last but not least, and we won't get into this functionality, but it is, it is available uh, now, is compare to model. So how many times do you get a rendering of a model and then, of course, get the, get the revision to that rendering? Well, this will compare the two models against one another and show you the differences between the two. And with the click of a button, we can update the estimate and keep it relevant to those new changes. Very powerful. So let's jump away from the model, open up the estimate, and now what you'll see is, is we have all of those walls, all of the slabs from the 2D broken out for us. We can break it out by location, so now we have Darren, we have the exterior floor one, interior floor one, and all of the sections right here as well. So think about those work breakdown structures and using location as a way to, to break out those costs the way that you want. And as you'd expect, when you get into this, you'll take a look at these, these particular blue triangles that we have here. Those will take us right back to the applicable object in the model. All we have to do is right click and it'll take us right back to that particular object. So that's what I had to cover for today and uh, I want to thank you for joining in. If you have any questions, please uh, phone us up at Practical Software Solutions and uh, uh, dial up your representative there, and we can do a more in-depth demonstration specific to your needs or answer any questions. Thank you much, and have a good day.